think we will move on from this. Um, thank you to the staff for pulling together this information. Uh, now we are going to our city tax revenue sources, our Taxes 101. together here. One of the things that um, is actually kind of fun is, is learning how taxes work. <laughs> uh, and I hope I convey that fun today. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said that before. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I was thinking about before doing this is that um, the good thing about municipal taxes is you see where they go. There, this people pick up your trash, the potholes get filled, the stop signs get put in, the police are there. Um, compared to state and federal taxes, where you're not really sure what it all gets spent on, this is this is something you can see and you actually know the exact people you can complain to <laughs> <laughs> about them. And, and so there's something that's very real about that. Uh, so I put together a, um, an overview of um, different taxes as they affect Tacoma Park. And so I'll be going through uh, real property tax revenue, the assessable base, the constant yield tax rate, the relationship between an assessment and the amount the, an owner will pay in taxes. I, like, I owe how much? Uh, other kinds of property taxes, income taxes, and tax duplication. The revenue for city services um, comes from um, a whole lot of tax. The percentage is very high for taxes. Um, for municipalities in Maryland, property taxes are one of the few things that we actually can uh, use to pay for services. About 93% of our general fund, and this is for general fund, 93% um, of our revenue come from taxes and intergovernmental transfers. Of this, 51% is property tax, and about 15% is income tax. In the current year, real property tax revenue is estimated to be $11.37 million comprises, as I said, about 51% of the general fund revenue. Um, the estimate that we get for this uh, general fund revenue is based on the net assessable real property base, which the state has said is about $1.9 billion of Tacoma Park. <coughs> that information was provided to us in February of 2015, and we multiply it by the tax rate that was set by the City Council of um, 58.5 cents per $100 assessed value. And I want to note that a lot of estimating goes into the assessments that are prepared by the State Department of Assessment and Taxation, known as SDAT or SDAT. SDAT assesses each property once every three years, um, so the state does a third of the properties each year. The goal is that taxes are applied fairly as individual property values change over time. All of Tacoma Park is in one assessment district. Uh, the assessments that just came out were done in late fall of 2015, and then you know, three years before that, and three years before that. I'm sorry, Ms. Lilly, just to, just to be clear, SDAT does one, one third of properties each year, but in the city, we're all done. We are, that's correct, okay. right. Um, most counties are actually divided into thirds, but our our city is uh, wholly within one of those um, time periods. And why is that? It's just the way the lines were drawn sometime. Mm -hmm. There's any potential change in it? I have thought about that, but I think it, it might shake people up too, so. <laughs> um, but there are pros and cons. There's pros and cons. So the state not only assesses the current value, but it also looks at the expected or the improved values of properties. And they look at current sales prices, kind of what, what are the house sales on a street uh, or commercial property sales. They also look at permits, what permits are out there, and they make the guesses of the actual value of the properties once the um, improvements have been done. 
and they are very clear that they don't use the value that people fill out on their permit applications. People put, oh, it's only going to cost $20,000 or something uh, because they think that will get them a lower tax rate, but that's not what they look at. To get to the net assessable base, the state averages that um, a, the increased value. So if you've got a house and it was um, assessed at 350000 and then the next time it was assessed at 400000 they take that 50000 and they spread it over three years. Um, if the, um, if then there's credits and abatements that are applied, and I'll go through that in a moment. One of the things that we have found is that when property of values increase significantly, um, the first year has a lot of uh, credits and abatements, and, and that makes sense. If all of a sudden you've got this new uh, amount value for your property, and what? Uh, more people challenge it, um, or uh, a number of credits come into play. So there's, here's some of the credits that come into play in Maryland. There's a homeowner's property tax credit. Residents can um, file, apply each year through the state. Lower income homeowners um, are able to get credits um, that affect the assessed value uh, for taxing purposes for their property. F Tacoma Park matches the credit. Uh, the county also matches some of the credit. There's a homestead tax credit, and this is something that um, if you own your home and you live in it, uh, you should make sure that you are shown that you are the homeowner and living there and have the homestead tax credit on your record because it limits the increased um, assessment for purpose of taxation to a 10% cap each year. Um, and there's just a one-time application for that, but there's still people who have not done that. Um, if you've just moved into a home, you don't get it for the first year, but then you need to know to apply. Um, there's a senior property tax credit. The Montgomery County does give a credit for residents who are 65 years and older, old and older, um, but those people have to go through the homeowner's property tax credit process for that. Um, there's a few other different kinds of credits, and it's very confusing. Um, the thing that seems to be um, a standard, though, is if you think you might need a tax credit, apply for the homeowner's tax property tax credit, uh, because something might be there to help you. And the percentage of our tax base, how many people use these tax credits? Um, well, this year, we gave, um, we matched 134 households. Okay. Can I just mm -hmm. ask a question? Yeah. Um, can you go back? To, so the homestead tax credit limits assessments, assessments to a 10% increase. That's here. right. That's different from the tax rate that is also capped. The, ta at, the tax rate is not capped, but it's, it's your tax rate is multiplied by your assessment. So there is an ass assessment for tax purposes that is lower than what the real value of your property is based on these processes. And that can't go up by more than 10% each right. year. That's right. That's right. But even though your house could be worth substantially more. more than that, right? I think it was, I think it was nine years ago when, when the properties went up a lot. Uh, my house doubled in value. And I was really glad at the 10% increase a year. So they assessed it as doubling in value, but they but the, but for taxing purposes, it only went up 10% a year for the portion that is multiplied with the property tax rate. Um, for abatements, owners can appeal a property assessment. Um, what is found is that owners of commercial and multifamily properties are more likely to apply for abatements. Um, they often are more successful because there's different ways of calculating what the right value is of these properties. And an abatement has a bigger impact on the overall tax base because just of the larger value of those properties. Abatements come, are decided on after they send out the net assessable base information to the communities. And you'll see the importance of that in a moment. <clears throat> um, Every, just about um, Valentine's Day, the city gets a constant yield tax rate form. 
um, that where the state has estimated the amount of real property tax revenue that the jurisdiction will receive in the current year. And then they divide the current year's estimated revenue amount by the next year's estimated net assessable base to get the constant yield tax rate. Essentially, this is saying that if you, they want to know what would the tax rate need to be to get just the same amount of revenue in the following year. If the constant yield tax rate is less than the current year's tax rate, then a public hearing is required, special notices are required. Um, if you think that you might be um, having a tax rate that is greater than the constant yield tax rate. If the constant yield tax rate is more than the current year's tax rate, then no special hearing or notice is required, no matter what rate will be proposed. And that's affected us last year and the year before? I think at least one year. Um, where we, because our property values actually went down. And this is the form that we get. Okay, that, mm -hmm. So even if you were going to increase it, the tax it, rate? Yes. You would, I mean, we probably would have a hearing anyway, though, right? We do. We, yeah. you know, as, as, because we're good people, we okay, have the hearing. But I think it's really kind of, I just, I remember questioning the person yeah. at the state. So we don't have to advertise that we're going to have this tax rate that would go up. Um, but they're more concerned about conveying information to the property pay taxpayers that even though perhaps the rate looks like it's staying the same, that they'd pay out more money because the assessments have gone up. So this is the form that we get every year. And I'm not going to go through it because this is Taxes 101, and this would be the graduate seminar. <laughs> um, but the, this is the computation that is done by the state. And things that are in it are interesting. Line two is an estimate of the homestead tax credit. Here, the estimate for the coming year was only 100, for this current year is only $157,000. The previous year, it was um, about 10 times that. I mean, so it's just a remarkable difference that they, that they have. Yes? Sorry, I'm stepping us back a little bit, but uh -huh. for example, on many property tax bills, it says county property tax credit? Right. What does that refer to? Um, the county property tax credit, it's usually six, 692 the last couple mm -hmm. years, um, is a special amount that the Montgomery County decided to um, provide people who live in their homes. And so it's just an extra credit. It does not go to the assessment. It just comes straight off of the tax bill. Do you have to apply for it? No. It's done um, every year. I mean, it's done automatically. Now, um, Ike Leggett has indicated that he's going to raise taxes, uh, going to propose to raise taxes this year. I don't know. I was wondering, does that mean that he would increase the tax rate but continue this county tax credit, or is there some other mix? And so uh, he proposes his... Um, his uh, budget on March 15th, so we'll see very soon. What's this, one of the things that this does, um, the lines um, kind of seven and eight, which talk about new construction and uh, full year new construction, there's the actual assessment work is done quite a bit earlier than when this is to apply and for, and so, um, as of January 1. And so what they do is make a lot of estimates about how much construction they anticipate. And they, uh, the folks actually look at things. Last year even they were looking at what would Tacoma Junction development do. I mean, so they look in the future and try to make some estimates about what the impacts are on property um, assessments. The um, what this does then is to, for this coming year, they've said that the amount of property tax revenue that we are to get with our tax rate of 58.5 cents per $100 valuation is $11,587,300. And in order to get that same amount of revenue next year, our tax rate should be 55.18 cents. They're not always right. Um, so one of the things that I have noticed is that um, you know, sometimes they're good at, at judging the assessable base and sometimes they're not. For FY13, 
they were almost spot on, only $5,200 difference from their estimate and the amount that we actually received as shown in our CAFR. Um, in FY14, uh, they overestimated and we got $57,000 less than was predicted. Last year, we had $128,000 less than was predicted by the state in terms of income tax, uh, in, in property tax revenue. And that's uh, two thirds of a cent of our property tax rate. So they were, so their assessable base estimate was, was quite off from what we actually netted uh, as property tax revenue. And do you understand why we have this trend line of them being off? No, I don't. Um, I think, you know, everybody's trying to figure out how our assessable base is, is changing. And what, per, what percent were they off by? Well, the uh, of what percent of our total uh, amount? Um, actually, I'd have to figure that one out. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but the, you know, obviously, $128,000 to us is is big money. Mm -hmm. So, how much will somebody's tax bill be? Um, <clears throat> So a property owner receives a triennial assessment of the property that was received in December, I think, for most people in this area. The amount of any increase will be divided over a three-year period. If the property owner has a homestead tax credit, that's for the homeowners, the maximum increase in any year is 10%. And then you get uh, this result is the assessment value for taxing purposes. In Tacoma Park, a property owner pays the following property taxes. <clears throat> they have a, a state property tax, which has stayed at that 11.2 cents for years and years. The county, which is a combined that includes a number of different um, things, including the transit tax and the fire tax and a recreation tax, <clears throat> is 92 cents. Uh, park and planning, it's 7.4 cents and the city of Tacoma Park is 58.5 cents. Altogether, <clears throat> for every $100 of assessed value, a property owner would pay, if there weren't any credits, um, $1.69 per $100 assessed value. <clears throat> so the tax rates are applied to the assessment for the applicable year on the assessment notice. Without any... Um, kind of changes, if your property is valued at $400,000 for tax purposes, if your assessable assessment for the year is $400,000, you'd pay $6,773 in taxes, and that's combined taxes with the county and the city. Then any other applicable credits would be applied, so the amount to pay could be less. Um, as I mentioned, we pay rebates to those with homeowner tax credits, and those people often uh, receive a check that um, brings the amount that they have to pay down to zero dollars. Um, this year, we, well, each year we set aside about $160,000 in our budget for this category. Um, this year, because we didn't have as many people who um, needed that assistance, were qualified for that assistance, 134 homeowners received checks and the amount totaled $116,000. Last year, the amount totaled $133,000 for 142 homeowners. I anticipate the next year there'll be quite a few more. Mm -hmm. how, how does one get eligible for that? What's the? You fill out the form, the state form, um, and, you've, and is, if you have um, gotten credit for that, we simply use the state's listing of the people. Is it income-based? It is income-based, okay. yeah. So if you're below adjusted income or whatever, a certain level, and the state authorizes that, approves it, then we add our part to That's it. That's right. There are some criteria about how much of the value of the house applies, and, and so it's not, a, it's not quite as simple as that. Mm -hmm. But we do encourage people to at least try for it. And I give you... Um, here's one example from the state records of a particular property. This one is on, from Sligo Mill Road in Ward 3. Um, this past year, their um, assessment was $436,600. But their new statement said, oh, your property is now assessed at $605,400. Uh, 
Um, however, the amount that they will be taxed on is in the far right column, the 492867 And another example of how this works, and that's not counting in the credit that Councilmember Mail mentioned that the county would put on and that kind of thing. Um, this particular house um, is a property on Kennebec, Ward 6. Um, the value was $290,700. Um, the new value, $404,200. The amount that they have to pay taxes on is in the far right, $328,533. sure that's Ward 6 or Ward 5? Um, actually, yeah, it was Kennebec. I'm sorry. That's okay. So of the money, say this property that's um, assessed at uh, $400,000 and the property owners pay $6,773 in property taxes, uh, the City of Tacoma Park would get $2,340. The um, county gets the bulk of it, which is $3,688. Park and planning gets 297. The state gets 448. Yes. So how is the money transmitted to us? Does it go through the county? It goes through the county. And then comes to us rather than from the state directly to us. That's right. It goes from the county. The right. county sends out the tax bills right. and collects the money and, and then transfers our portion back. Um, as I note here, some of the Montgomery County money is also returned to us as tax duplication payments. About half of Montgomery County's taxes goes to MCPS for the school district. Could, could I just ask another mm -hmm. question? Sure. But the, it's all really collected by the state, right? So does the, the property taxes are sent out by the, the, the property taxes are collected by the county. But it's on your uh, so you send it separately. You don't send it on your income tax. Right. It's not yeah. it's not the same as income tax, right. okay. and you know one of the things that that many people don't quite realize about property taxes. Many times it's paid by the mortgage company, mm -hmm. so you never see it. It's part of you know it's mm -hmm. mortgage it's bill. There's a certain amount mm -hmm. out of it. Um, the people for whom I feel um, get hit the hardest and and are impacted the most by um, property tax bills are people who've already paid off their house. And so it tends to be elderly. Um, that's part of the reason that there's some special programs for people who are lower income or that are elderly um, to help give some credits um, for those people who, for whom this is a, a bigger hit. The assessments for properties in Tacoma Park with the latest triennial assessment show an increase in value overall of about 25%. Um, but after reductions for the three-year averaging, the credits, and the abasements, abatements, um, the increase for taxing purposes is just 6% for the coming year. As I mentioned, we'll likely pay more in our match to the homeowner's tax credit. And I believe that um, the increase, actually, I should say increase for FY18 for the city is likely to be greater than 6% because you will have uh, dealt with already with the abatements. Most people will have figured that out. It's a little bit easier to make the assessment uh, to figure out what the assessable base is. So we have some other property taxes. We have, um, for businesses, personal property tax. And if people move from other states, they get confused because many places people pay personal property taxes as well as real property taxes. In Maryland, this is for businesses. And we have a different tax rate. We have $1.55 per $100. Uh, we net just $353,500 from that um, tax. Personal property tax um, comes is assessed on two things, and not all jurisdictions assess for both. Um, personal property are furniture, fixtures, tools, um, equipment that's not used for manufacturing or for research and development. And then there's inventory, which is the average monthly value of products for sale. 
We also have a railroads and public utilities tax at $1.57 per $100, yielding $196,250. Yes. Could we just go back to the mm -hmm. inventory tax? Yep. So, I'm sorry. Um, no, lots of people have raised inventory taxes. And so, can you explain how that works? Because as I understood it when I was talking to some people in the business district, that we have a lot of flexibility in where we set that percentage. We, we have... Um, I don't know the full answer. We certainly have a lot of flexibility in what the tax rate is for personal property tax. We can choose to tax inventory or not. I don't know, I think some places have a way that they do a percentage of the inventory, but I'm not very familiar with that option. Um, Montgomery County doesn't tax inventory. Um, some jurisdictions don't. And so it has been something that um, people complain about. I was just going to ask. Do you know of the three hundred fifty-three thousand? How much is? From I don't know. I don't know how that breaks out. Just to maybe point out the obvious is that some businesses have a great deal of inventory, mm -hmm. like a retail mm -hmm. business, right. and other businesses, like a law office, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or a real estate agency, or there's plenty of different things have zero inventory. Right. So the inventory tax is a burden carried basically by uh, businesses that have inventory. So I don't know, it's just, I'm not just, it's just something that needs to be noted. Right, and my understanding is that businesses have to fill out this form and send it in that lists all of this information of whether or not they're taxed on it. Now we can come to income tax. Okay, can I just ask yes. one clarification? So mm -hmm. for example, the um, solar installer that was seeking a zoning um, exemption mm -hmm. in Ward 3, they would have an inventory of solar panels in their building, and that would be taxed, just the same as a retail product, let's say the stuff in Mark's kitchen, which is right there for a uh, consumer retail customer. Mm -hmm. Those would both be. I think inventory. so. I am not. I am not an expert on inventory tax. Um, I was reading the, you know, what the forms have that you file with the state, and um, I would think that that the solar panels, because they're a product that are so, is sold, um, do would. We, do we get the information on which businesses pay that tax, or do we know? We get a cryptic report monthly, and it's, I will say it's cryptic because there's, there is a, um, an assumption that if you're a business, you pay at least a certain amount, and they kind of like charge at a high rate until you say, no, here's the real information, and then they rebate it lower. And so most of the reports that we get are the credits that come through, so it's really hard to understand. That's not to say that we might not be able to get somebody to run something for us, but the information that we get is very difficult to understand. I'd, I'd like to see if we could get mm -hmm. a, I'm not questioning your knowledge of it, but to get a You should question my clear knowledge. Clear understanding. <laughs> It'd be good. Sure. I'll see if I can get a report. Okay. okay now income taxes. Tacoma Park receives 17% of the state income tax that's, that is paid by Tacoma Park residents that would otherwise go to Montgomery County. Income tax revenue accounts for about 15% of the city's general fund revenue. And in recent years, we've gotten between $2.4 million to $2.8 million in income tax revenue. Income tax revenue is hard to estimate. Um, it varies due to economic conditions. And most of the um, incoming revenue from income tax comes after the budget's prepared um, for the next year. So you really you're guessing at what the numbers are, um, even for the current year. However, Tacoma Park's income tax has been more stable than Montgomery County's because we don't have um, a lot of rich people that have the variability of capital gains um, taxes. And um, that's been useful for us. It also means that I cannot use Montgomery County's system for estimating income tax. I've had to come up with uh, 
my own version. We've had a couple in income tax problems. Um, there's the Wynn decision that was a Supreme Court decision. <clears throat> Maryland lost the Supreme Court case. Um, it's requiring income tax refunds to many residents, particularly in Montgomery County. These are people who had to pay income to uh, multiple, who earned income from multiple jurisdictions. Um, we had very little impact from the Wynn case. Um, we are to refund about $40,000 to people for Wynn case um, decisions. <clears throat> The way that this works is that the, um, the state will take a, out of our income tax um, payment a total of $40,000 over time. <clears throat> That's something we do get directly from the state is the income tax payments. However, the Comptroller's Office did not correctly distribute income tax revenue to the jurisdictions. Um, they completely did not pay attention to the addresses on the income tax forms for determining where income tax revenue goes. And the, the issue with this is that when a person fills out a state of Maryland income tax form, it asks you for your county, and you put that number in, that indication, and then it says if you're in a municipality, you identify that municipality. Some people don't put something there because they think that'll mean more income tax gets taken out, which isn't the case. The amount that the municipalities gets comes from the amount that would otherwise go to the county. Some people don't know. Some people put the wrong thing because they think they're in a municipality and they're not. Um, some people in the Chevy Chases put Chevy Chase and they don't say village of Chevy Chase or town of Chevy Chase or Chevy Chase section five or whatever. Um, my view is that the Comptroller's Office really didn't care to look carefully at these, um, at these uh, filings, and so they did not accurately distribute the money back to the municipalities or the counties. Um, Tacoma Park, according to the audit that was done by the firm that recently went through their, the state's records, um, is to receive $453,000 this month. Um, covering um, taxes that were sent to Montgomery County instead of Tacoma Park since 2010. Um, some jurisdictions lost a lot of money this way. Montgomery County overall is netting $6 million from this process. Um, the Comptroller's Office does not want to go back before 2010, although they acknowledge that the, the problems were from before then as well. Um, and um, there's questions about the accuracy of the $453,000. You know, um, do they have the right list? Um, is this, are these estimates, have they made the changes? Are they gonna make the same problems in the future? They did, however, provide us a fairly detailed form that says um, how much money was not sent to us in 2010, in 2011, in 2012, and I've looked at those numbers pretty carefully. Subject of tax duplication. Tacoma Park taxpayers pay taxes to Montgomery County and to Tacoma Park for services only provided by Tacoma Park, several services. And the duplicated amount is to be paid by the county to the city as a rebate. We receive um, payments uh, for um, police rebate, in lieu of police, in lieu of crossing guards, in lieu of roads, in lieu of parks, and library payment. And um, the police rebate is a calculation that is in the county code. Um, the in lieu of police is more the municipal tax duplication form was related to a formula. Um, together, the police rebate and the in lieu of police um, in FY16 uh, total $3,460,000, which is about half of the police budget of $7 million. Um, the uh, crossing guards, roads, and parks are municipal tax duplication formulas. The library payment is a calculation that is not considered municipal tax duplication, although it's when we finally get some other agreement on municipal tax duplication, it'll probably be put back in there. We get a certain amount uh, based on the activity of the 
county libraries that comes to us. Okay, just, just, just to clarify, mm -hmm. you don't need to go back. 75% of the tax duplication payments essentially are for police related issues. Yes, and in fact, when you look at the total amount of um, tax duplication payments that the county pays out, mm -hmm. uh, which is only about 13 million total if they do it right, um, you know, a huge portion comes to Tacoma Park simply because of our police department. Uh, the only um, category that goes to every municipality in Montgomery County is the roads um, payment. And the missing wedge, of course, is uh, recreation. That's right. Um, they don't, there are a number of services that are provided in, in a shared way, and recreation is a shared one. We can use Montgomery County Recreation, and, or we can use our own recreation department. Um, Nevertheless, the Recreation Department of Montgomery County has admitted that they rely on us to provide recreation services for a huge segment of the population in this part of the and, county. And I didn't mean to imply that was the only missing wedge. That's the big. No, it's a big. It's a big. big missing it's wedge. a very big one. Yeah. So we have a working group. Uh, they met. And I was on it. I'm, I guess I'm still on it to prepare information <laughs> for the County Council's uh, Government Operations Committee. There's more work to be done. We did get agreement um, as a committee on an, some expansion of the services to cover, particularly some uh, contributions to three other municipalities for police services that they get nothing for. Um, and there was pretty good agreement on some of the formulas to use for some of the categories. Um, what are those other municipalities? Chevy Chase Village, Gaithersburg, and Rockville. I'm hoping that the negotiations restart again after this year's budget, but everything's kind of been on hold lately. We also um, kind of not tax, not tax money, but just um, other funds besides could, the general fund. Yep. Could I ask a question about the um, tax duplication? Sure. So do you have an estimate roughly of the amount that you think we should be owed for things like um, the recreation, which Mr. Siemens mentioned, and maybe other things that we, you believe we ought to get that we're not getting. A range of it, maybe. You know, I think um, it's not double what we're getting, but it's somewhere, it's, it's probably, I don't know, 20% more than we're getting. I would, that would think. So that's a couple of million dollars, maybe, or? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think so. Okay. Uh, maybe a million more. Um, there's different ways to calculate things. Um, there's some impacts, and, and you have to think about how does it work across other jurisdictions. Um, so it's, it's not a completely clean process. Um, Things that are shared, such as recreation, get calculated a little bit differently than something that where we do it, which is police services. Um, so it's, <clears throat> I don't have a good figure on that one, um, but when they um, go through the formulas, if they had applied the formulas, we'd be getting a good, about a good bit more, and I think we should get just slightly more than that. And, um, I think the most important thing is to finally get formulas so we don't fight about it. It is very frustrating. Um, one of the things that will come up if, the, if this moves forward is also a discussion about should the payments be coming as a rebate or should they come as a deduction credit on people's property taxes. And there's arguments on both sides of that in jurisdictions according to the kind of the approach that we were looking at would vote on which option they want. So has the county dropped the whole grant proposal? No. Okay. The county is try has tried a thing that said, well, we'll pay you this amount in tax duplication, and we know that there should be some extra money, so we'll pay some extra money as a grant. The uh, kind of the rub for the county is that there are some jurisdictions that because of the 17% cut in income tax, that go to the municipalities. Some jurisdictions can do their whole budget off, just off their income tax money. 
they don't need to have property taxes and other services, fees for services. Um, everybody at the county that knows anything about this subject knows Tacoma Park is completely different and that we are owed more money. So one of the things that I think has been successful is that message is there. Mm -hmm. We provide many services. You know, we only get 15% of our budget from income tax money. Um, they know that, that we need um, that we need funds and that um, we contribute to the county and as, a, as making this a better county. Well, looking, for, looking ahead, you know, one of, I think, our obligations as council members is to be able to help our constituents, taxpayers, understand tax duplication. <clears throat> yep. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, it would be therefore very helpful to be able to come up with a reasonable number of how much it is, as our former mayor Bruce would say, that the, the size of the theft mm -hmm. of tax money is uh, on average from year to year. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not prepared to give that number not tonight. Today. Not today. Not and that's today. fine. I don't care. Uh, but at some point, I think we we ought to be able to have a number that's reasonably defensible mm -hmm. and reasonably explainable to, yeah. to our residents. And our county council representative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, and our county council representative. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, I think that the, uh, that the kind of the gut explanation is important, which is if you're paying money to the county for this service and you're paying money to the city for this service and the county is not providing that service, mm -hmm. then it does make sense that you get that money back. Um, so that part is clear. Mm -hmm. um, there's some, you know, it, some of the stuff gets a little bit tough to, to calculate. Mm -hmm. um, there's also one of the things that is, also, is the case, um, and it took a while for the county staff to kind of recognize this, is how much municipalities do to, as a partner with the county, to making this county a good place. Mm -hmm. So we may provide a higher level of police service than the county would pay for, but we're also defending this part of the mm -hmm. county in, and making it a better place. We may have more street lights or we may have more uh, street furniture and it's part of making the county prettier. And I think that all of those kinds of things add up to a contribution that we make to the greater good of Montgomery County. And, and over time, there was some recognition that it wasn't just municipalities taking from the county. Um, and in fact, that, that we're here as part of the county and, that, and we have real merits in and of ourselves. I mean, another example, I think, and not to, to but drag this out, is recreation. Because a lot of people who do not live in Tacoma Park yeah use our recreation programs. And the county has sort of thought the opposite, that somehow or another it didn't work that way. But in fact, oh, the, the, it does. Yeah, and the county rec staff will make it very clear. <laughs> just want to finalize my, my uh, kind of overview by just mentioning some other funds. We have a stormwater fund, and, and Councilmember Koreshi answered this question a little bit ago. Um, but all of our stormwater work is funded by our stormwater fees and a single family home rate is $55 per year. It is not part of the tax. Um, the speed camera fund is funded by revenue from speed camera funds, fines. Uh, that's about $1.8 million a year. And the special revenue fund consists of various grant monies. For many of our big projects, we have lots of grants. Uh, most come from federal or state programs or the cable franchise agreements. Um, so these don't get counted into the general fund because they can't be used for other purposes, mm -hmm. um, but they do help um, provide the services that we offer. And can you elaborate on the, how we use the money from the speed camera fund? Speed camera funds um, can only be used for um, activities that increase public safety. So that includes the safe roadways to school. It includes safe. Yeah, it includes sidewalks or um, efforts to make um, walk, walking ways across streets better, uh, safer. Um, we use it for some police um, activities uh, and equipment and um, some improvements 
about so that our streets work better, that kind right. of thing. So you've asked some questions, but are there some other ones? No, I have all the answers. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and wonderful PowerPoint. Is there it you on go. The website? It will be on the website. And I was actually thinking about putting it together with my blog on assessments, and, mm -hmm. and so people can go through and, and read both of those. And then they can ask me questions. I would also say that if it's possible for our wonderful city TV to actually take this part of the city council meeting and make it its own standalone okay. um, piece and put it on the website. Okay. I think this would be something to, um, it'd be good to point residents to sure. um, and come back Happy to. Happy to do that. Thank you. I have one last out question. The current week. I'm sorry? This presentation will outlive the current week. Yes, okay. I think we'll look it back at it other times. One last question. So, I don't know if others would agree with this, but the assessments can be way off the market value. Yes. And maybe that's nice because it, you know your house is assessed a lot less than you could sell it on the market, or maybe the opposite happens. I think when the opposite happens, people tend to seek an adjustment. I haven't seen too many people who seek an adjustment when it's in the other direction. But do we know why they're so far off? I don't know that they're that far off. Um, the um, they have a system they go through in different areas, and they. Um, you know, they do just like any other assessor does. They compare square footage um, and, um, you know, the, what the kind of improvements are. Uh, they will show you, you know, their worksheet that they used and their comparables. Um, if there's a section where there's a sense that a whole area was off, you know, it would be interesting to know uh, what the challenge is on that and, and get that straightened out. Um, I think, you know, just with the, even with the question about why they kind of underguessed our assessments last year or overguessed, I think, um, you know, this area didn't have a lot of change for a while. And so, you know, now there's, there's some new, there's some movement and they're, they're catching up just as everyone else is. Um, are, are the property assessors trained appraisers? Are they licensed appraisers? I don't know that. No. I don't know. Because no, that was the, thing that I always couldn't understand is, you know, how do they get these numbers and if you actually are selling property that it's residential or commercial, you can come up with a completely different number. Mm -hmm. And I can understand it for commercial because it's, you know, they don't have access to the rent rolls. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that would have a big uh, implication in the value, but. Yeah, I, you know, most of the time, I'm actually impressed by how well they do on these. Um, and I'm at least impressed with their dedication. The Washington McLaughlin property, for example, um, you know, they had personally gone inside the building. They had looked around. Um, so they, you know, they don't just kind of go off of some kind of a statistical sheet. Um, they do go out and check the properties. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not able to judge that. Can I, can mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. comment? From, from my experience in, in, in lending, mm -hmm. uh, no, no lender ever relies on assessments yeah. in determining the value of real estate for whether they're lending for the real estate or just be using the real estate as collateral. Mm -hmm. They always will require an, an individual appraisal of the property done by an, uh, a, a, an appraiser who's got the right credentials, mm -hmm. right. and that's a different story. Uh, and the thing is, is that um, assessments are almost never going, if it's going to be an accident if the assessment actually turns out to be something close to mark, you know, really right at market value, because there's, even on one block or similar houses, there's a lot of subtle differences mm -hmm. in the way the property is maintained, and uh, and things other things that an assessor, who's not a, they are not appraisers. They're not they don't have they they can choose to be, but they're not necessarily appraisers. That are not ever cannot be reflected in, in assessments because this is a this is a very mass process, mm -hmm. and it's largely mechanistic, except for individual properties like say Washington McLaughlin, which they absolutely have to to take a you know a harder look at. Councilmember Mail. 
Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick follow-ups, requests for information. Mm -hmm. um, the first is that the value of land appeared, appears to be done in a somewhat consistent manner. So every house on a street or every house on a block uh, may have a different increase in the value of the home, but the mm -hmm. land um, appreciation is the same. But different blocks in the city had different appreciation rates. Mm -hmm. Sometimes very, very different. Mm -hmm. So parts of Ward 2 had, you know, one area was 10% on average land value went up. Mm -hmm. and house values went up a lot more. Mm -hmm. And another area, land value went way, way up, and house values went up not very much. Mm -hmm. um, so to the extent to which there's any explanation of that that you could get, just sort of mm -hmm. general trends across the city mm -hmm. from land values, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay. The specific question also to follow up on in land value is at some point our environment committee looked at the existence of easements that protected open space in the community, of mm -hmm. which there is some. Mm -hmm. And those should change the land value because they change, take away the development right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just appreciate, given that data layer exists in the, in mm -hmm. the uh, planning department, um, if, if you could check whether that's being properly re reflected. And this, just to go back to the question of inventory, um, the, what I'd really love us to get at, and it doesn't have to be immediately, but is just to make sure that for the businesses which have, uh, for the businesses located in Tacoma Park, um, let's say there's 200, mm -hmm. uh, how many businesses do we receive inventory tax from? Do they mm -hmm. match up? Mm -hmm. The city knows some of the bigger businesses, right? Like Rite Aid is it is mm -hmm. in Tacoma Park. That's correct, right? At the junction at, at, uh, at University of New Hampshire, no. isn't that? Walgreens. That's Walgreens. 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 I'm sorry, Walgreens, yeah. yeah. Uh, Rite Aid's across the street. Yeah. yeah. That, that would be, Walgreens would be, presumably have a pretty big in, uh, uh, inventory, mm -hmm. uh, more than the bead mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, there are like, sort of a top 20 list of businesses that the city staff could presumably come up with if they just sitting down at a table. And just to make sure that um, people are filling out those forms uh, and that we don't have a significant problem, that mm -hmm. very few are filing it and others are not. Uh, it would just be good to just check that. Okay. Um, um, I, I will do both of these. Um, one of the things um, on a later note, Businesses like Walgreens and stuff, they do file this. That, those seem to be more consistent. It's, it's kind of the small, mm -hmm. single proprietor, proprietor folks that sometimes don't even know they need to fill out the paperwork um, that we find. Um, but it certainly will get that information. Um, one of the things I do know about, um, I was talking to Marie Green, who kind of heads the efforts that, to do this, oversees the assessors for Montgomery County. Um, and she was saying that sometimes they had to tweak the value of the land because the overall value had gone up so much and they had to figure out a way to make that work. So sometimes there is some adjustments where you wouldn't think there would be to try to make the overall number work out right. Um, but I'm, I may be able to get that in a more coherent statement um, okay. they could share with you. Thank you. Yeah. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my question is, can we break out in the property tax what our commercial base is and what we are getting from the multifamily properties in the city? Is that I possible? I think we can, actually, because of Al Carr, because he um, requested a full listing of all of our properties and their assessments, and, um, and it's broken into categories, so we should be able to, to run those numbers. Okay, I think that would be helpful. Can we have that database? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I sent it out to you, but I probably not. did. I sort of <laughs> I think it was the same time I was getting lots and lots of messages about people's appraised values. <laughs> so was, Council Member Kovar. Um, just to be clear on for the inventory tax, mm -hmm. in addition to everything that Council Member Mel just discussed and what we talked about, I think it's important to understand um, what power or authority we have to adjust whatever the amount is. So one thing that would be interesting to see was who's paying it, who maybe should and isn't. But um, I'd like to ha have a clearer idea of if, if, if it's set here, could we set it here or here mm -hmm. instead? So okay. thanks. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much for this. And uh, we are adjourned. Love it. Love it. Love it. Good night. Oh, you're going to testify to me.